I don't mean to be dramatic here, but in this video, I'm gonna use 3D printing to save my marriage. Okay, that was a bit dramatic YouTuber of me, but I'm not entirely kidding. You see, my lovely partner Ruby and I are endothermically different. As the weather outside turns towards summer, this is something we really need to consider. I personally run pretty darn warm. It's like I'm in the desert, and if I'm not chilled just right, I will sweat and toss and turn my way through the night. Meanwhile, on just the other side of the bed, Ruby will be frigid while I'm sweating like she's on some glacier freezing away. For me, it's pretty straightforward. Turn down the temperature and the air conditioning and I will make it through the night just fine. Now, Ruby can layer up and handle that. That's okay, except for one glaring problem. This offending vent in our room. It's above my side of the bed, but because of the angle of it, it blows directly on her through the night and makes her chillier than me. This is of course where 3D printing is going to come in and help me save my marriage by better directing and controlling the air conditioning in our bedroom. It's a super basic thing, but it should make a big quality of life improvement for my partner that will then thereby give me a quality of life improvement by not having to balance the temperatures so precisely to get us both comfortable. Now that you know what problem we're trying to solve, it's time to use 3D printing to get there. First step is going to, of course, be to take down the offending vent so I can measure off of it and decide what direction I'm going to go. Once I'm able to drop this thing down and away from the ceiling, I can see that it's actually a fair bit nastier and dirtier than I might have expected. So time to clean this thing too. That leaves me with a gaping hole to the abyss in my ceiling. Nothing creepy about that at all. Before we dive deep into the measuring and design portion of this video, I want to take a quick moment to thank this video's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Just like I'm using 3D printing to solve real world problems, that's what Brilliant is all about, solving problems in the world of learning. Brilliant is about hands-on education. They want you to get in and not just memorize things to take a test, but actually learn new skills by staying engaged with the active learning process that they take you through step by step. Imagine when you're building something intricate and you really have to design it. You need to understand each individual component to get a good final result right? That's how Brilliant approaches learning. If you've ever wanted to dive deeper into a range of topics and really enhance your problem solving skills, Brilliant's interactive lessons are a great way to go. For me, as somebody with ADHD, it is so difficult to keep on task when I'm trying to learn something new, and Brilliant's courses are a really good way to keep me engaged. They even gamify it by giving me points when I get the correct answers. So why not give it a try today? Brilliant has offered up an excellent deal for anybody who follows my link, brilliant.org slash mandicreally. You'll get a 30-day free trial of the whole platform. And if you decide to stick with it and really get your learning kicked into high gear, you can get 20% off of an annual subscription by following that link as well. How about we get to back to designing up a part that's going to quiet the turmoil in my house. So now that I've got this down and off the ceiling, I can decide how I'm going to design a fix for my problem. Originally, my thought was simply to make a three-sided shroud that would go onto one side of this and keep the airflow from going directly to Ruby and just shoot it straighter down toward me. But now that I have this in hand, I'm thinking the simpler solution that won't require longer screws is going to be just make a whole new one of these things. Is that actually simpler? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. First things first, before I can start designing, I need to measure this thing to both ensure that I know it's going to fit onto one of my 3D printers when I get a part designed, but also to design off of. In this particular case, it's measuring out at 28 centimeters in a square shape. So that'll fit onto one of my bigger 300 millimeter machines. And in my case, I'm using my Starrett tape measure to measure this. I bought this specifically because it's a metric tape measure and it just makes my life easy for these quick, larger measurements. The next thing I'm gonna do is measure the thickness of the flange of this vent. Now, obviously it's stamped steel. It's not actually as thick as I'm measuring, but that is the depth that it stands off of the ceiling in the original design. So the screws that are going through it are factoring in that total thickness. Now, I'm not worried about using the shutoff functionality that this previously had. I know I want this vent to keep functioning. That's part of why I'm just gonna replace this thing, for now anyway. I'll put it back up once we move out of here. But I can use the space that that was taking up for a different design to help me guide airflow. We'll get to that in a minute. 
The last measurements that I need to get are the size of the opening in the ceiling and the depth of it. That'll let me know the space that I have to work with when I'm designing my airflow guide paths that I'm going to be putting in. I don't want this thing to protrude more from the ceiling than the original one did, so I'm going to do all of my trickery as far as that's concerned up in the ceiling, so it should still look pretty good from in the bedroom and not intrude into our space. How dirty the vent I removed was reminds me that I should drag the ladder upstairs to the third floor, climb up and pull down the air filter for the AC that's only serving the second and third floor of the house. I replaced this filter this time last year and judging by how nasty it is compared to the new one that I'm putting in, I should probably be doing it more frequently. This is your reminder, replace your air filters. At this point, we have the measurements from the real world objects that we're gonna both be recreating with the vent and then working around as far as the opening in the ceiling is concerned. So we're ready to dive into design for the part we're going to print. Now, this isn't going to be a full on tutorial about how to design something in Fusion 360. I'm only gonna cover a couple of brief points about what I'm using to create the object that I'm going to be printing here. In fact, as of this moment, I've already created it, printed it, and it's actually installed, but that's later in the video for you. In Fusion, as with many CAD applications, we have to start with sketches. We're going to start with a drawing of what we are working with. That's gonna allow us to get down our base dimensions. In this particular case, I'll start with a rectangle at 280 by 280 millimeters. That's the overall outside dimensions that I want my new vent to be. I use keyboard shortcuts a lot in Fusion. I'll hit L and that'll give me the line tool. Then I'll hit X and that'll change my line type to a construction line. That is a dotted line that's not actually going to be part of the object, but we can use it for measuring and also the design process. I'm gonna create an X from each corner of the square to each corner, and that'll find me the center point of my square to work off of. The next thing I'm gonna do is hit C, which is the circle tool. And I'm going to create a 180 millimeter circle. Now I didn't show doing so as it was kind of difficult to do, but I reached up inside of the box in the ceiling and measured that the opening for the vent coming in was 180 millimeters ish. Actually, it was a little bit smaller than that, but I want my vent to be a little larger to catch all of the air that's coming out of that tube into it. I can then select that circle and hit X again, and that will change it from a construction line to an actual line that we will be using in the sketch, as this is part of what I want the design to include. I'm going to go up to the create menu and go to a rectangle and then center rectangle. Now that's a rectangle that starts from a central point. We're obviously going to use the center point that we created here, select that and then stretch outward to create our square. I want my square to be 180 by 180 millimeters. Now what I want to create is a vent that fits into that recessed box in the ceiling and then tapers from a circle where the inlet tube coming out of the ceiling into that box is to the square register outlet. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right to showing you the vent that I created so you can better understand what I mean. Where it enters coming into that box from the AC system is a circle. So I created a circle inlet for it. But then where it exits into the room, the opening that's in my ceiling is square. I could create a round opening. I could do whatever I want for the opening on the outside of the vent, but square just makes more sense and it'll match the rest of the elements in the room. A lot of room home details are square. The other vent is square. It just makes sense. For anybody who might want to see some more inside about how I designed this, here are the individual components. We've got the top of the grid, we've got the actual tapered element that has the outlet register on it, and then we have the flange that actually will mount to the ceiling, and each one is kind of an individual component that gets combined into our finished product. Let me know if you wanna see actually in-depth Fusion 360 tutorials from me in the future. With my design files in hand, I loaded up some white PLA and sent this to print, and it quickly layer shifted on me. But here's some inside baseball of content creation for you. I let the print keep on running so I could get this time lapse to put into this video because it was getting some like boogies on the backside of the print from bad retraction settings. 
and I didn't feel like tuning that in to do another time lapse of this print for the final result you folks are gonna see. So I just let this one ride so I would have this video clip. That's the reality is sometimes the part you see me filming in a project or the seat one you see me working on is not necessarily the one that ends up in the final project due to issues or design iterations. Oh, and while that was printing, I noticed that my Z joints on my Voron 2.4 were loose and wiggling around, which was causing print artifacts and probably the layer shift issue as well. So second verse off camera, I loaded up some Polymaker natural colored ASA into one of the new poly dryer boxes that they sent over. I decided the natural color ASA was gonna be a good choice because of the off-white nature of the bedroom colors. I felt that it would fit better than the white PLA that I'd used previously. Does this print need to be ASA? Does it need high temperature handling? Well, if it was a heater vent, it, yes, it would need it. However, this is only an AC vent. We have baseboard heating. So realistically, PLA would be fine for this application, but I had a spool of natural ASA, so I went with this. Now, as far as the dryer is concerned, one, this is not sponsored nor an ad or anything or a product review of this. They sent it over. I figured I'd give it a test run. So far, I like the poly dry and poly dryer setup, but the point really here is people are constantly asking me about the spools of filament I have in the open air on the racks in my studio. So I just want to address it quick. They ask me, doesn't it get all moisture ridden and covered in dust and ruin your prints? The short answer is no, it doesn't. Long answer is there's probably a couple of reasons for this. One, the studio is climate controlled. So it is a lower humidity level inside of here than it is outside in the real world where all that scary grass stuff is. Two, the filament you see up on the racks may be in the same color order, but it doesn't mean it's the same spools. I am often cycling through spools, so you might see the same black one week after week, but the reality is that's like five spools ago. I, I keep running through the material, so it doesn't sit up there for that long. Third, I just don't really care, honestly. With ASA especially, which is the material I most use these days, I find the only artifacts I really see in my prints are some stringing in the wetter spools that have been sitting around and aging a little bit. And honestly, I largely just don't care. It's rarely an issue that can't be cleaned up quickly. Now this natural ASA has been sitting around longer than most. This is simply not a color I use often, so it's been sitting up there for probably a year, open, doing nothing, not getting used. So I decided to try out the poly dryer setup, and I really like this whole system. How effective is it? I really don't know. I dried the material before I printed, and my final product is still quite hairy. Does that mean that the dryer didn't do its job? No, not necessarily anyway. That material had been sitting around for a while, so maybe it needed a couple of runs through the dryer. I don't know. That machine also has a fairly new hot end in it with one of those flow rate extender nut things on it. And I think that that kind of contributes to some stringing issues and oozing issues. And I didn't necessarily tune this material in specifically for printing. It's the same profile I use for all the other colors. So maybe this material needed a little bit more tuning on temperature or retraction settings. I just threw a standard profile at it and it could be down to that. Any which way, I've got my final vent here in my hands. And yeah, it's got a fair bit of stringing on here, but a couple of seconds with a heat gun will clean up a fair bit of that. Now with my final part in hand, a little bit defuzzed, it's time to go get this thing installed and save me on some marriage counseling. Let's get to it. After my assistant sets a tone by having one of her floppy fish moments, it's time to get this event installed. This is obviously a very straightforward process. I designed it to go right back where the original vent holes were. It fits up inside of the ceiling just as it should and installs with the four screws that came out of the previous vent so I can always go back to it when I'm ready to. But I do want to show you what's happening with this thing. So very scientifically, I taped some pieces of tissue paper to it as airflow demonstration implements. Once the AC kicks on, the afties will show you the airflow direction. And it's exactly how I intended it to be. 
At the left side of the vent, air travels largely straight down. At the right side of the opening, it goes away from the bed. I designed an internal air path that guides the air away from the bed in this way. The idea is to keep my side of the room cooler and not risk having some of the air spill off of me toward Ruby. So I made sure that it either goes straight down or away from the bed entirely. And with that, 3D printing has saved my marriage. For now, for this project, I am really happy with the result I got. It's a basic setup, but it did exactly what I needed it to do. I could have made something a little simpler, a little more modular. There's a lot of ways I could have gone with it. Something that didn't use almost a kilogram of filament could have been done, but it worked for my needs. Overall, this is a simple project, but something that 3D printing allowed me to achieve with relative ease. I recreated a new component for my house to direct air in a specific way and fix a problem that we were having. With that, I hope you saw an application of 3D printing here that can inspire you to fix something around your house for your own personal comfort or improve your relationship status. I'm gonna wrap it up here, folks. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy this video that YouTube thinks is best for you, or this one that's just a recent one I've uploaded. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you, folks.